got folks from everywhere. Amen. Amen. So go on and miss on Sunday. Somebody going to get in your seat. Amen. Folk coming from all over to be at church and you at home. Amen. But when the devil hurts you, look at somebody and say, examine yourself. It's very important, and this is one of the hardest things to learn, but you have to learn it. It's a must to be able to look at yourself and know what's wrong with you. It's real hard because it's so much easy to deflect and make it look like it's someone else when it's really you. Yeah, you got that pattern of all your friendships being wrecked. And all your relationships being destroyed. And you think that folks are picking on you and messing with you. But that pattern ought to teach you something over time. Maybe it's me. And you have to be able to get before the Lord and ask him, Lord, is it me? And then don't wait on the audible voice. Wait for somebody to come tell you. Because God's going to use somebody to tell you about yourself. Am I telling the truth? A human being, you waiting to hear from the, uh, the, the, the heavenlies and the spirit. God haven't told me nothing, so I guess I'm okay. Nah, bruh, this sermon told you. You better listen. Be still and listen. Be able to examine yourself or you will walk around messing everything up for a long time. Have a whole history of just tore up stuff because you didn't know how to examine yourself you know when you jive if you don't know you better learn when you jive lord am i being a jive turkey yeah it seems like trouble always seems to find me it's not finding you you're trouble hello trouble trouble ain't went nowhere it didn't have to find you you're the trouble. And you got to be able to examine yourself. Amen. And a lot of people grow up with, you know, um, entitlement. You know, because your mama lied to you and told you that you was just roses. And yeah, yeah. And then you went in the real world and found out you wasn't as bomb as you thought. You think something's wrong with everybody else. And it's you. Yeah. Yeah, so you got to examine yourself. And how do you examine yourself? With the word of God. You let the word examine you. You let the word examine you. That's why you got to go to a real church. I don't want to be in no church where the message is not examining me. If I go to church and I feel good every service, I don't want to be at that church. I need at some point at the church, I'm mad at the pastor. Brother, you must have talked to somebody that know me. That should happen. That should happen every now and then. That gut check. He's talking about me. Yes. But it's not intentional. God is using the word to examine you. He's holding a mirror up to you so you can see yourself. Because once you see yourself, you can do something about it. And be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. If you're a hearer, you'll see yourself, and the Bible says you'll walk away and forget what you saw. Yeah. Yeah. Look at somebody say, when the devil hurts you, examine yourself. Amen. See, that is right there. That's, what, that's, that's what's supposed to happen when you're reading the Bible. That right there. That's why some folk don't want to read the Bible. They don't want to read it because when they open it up, they see that mug in the pages. God, are you trying to tell me something? It's the Bible. He's definitely going to tell you something. Amen. After taking a hard blow from the enemy, a true warrior reevaluates himself and will take an assessment of his injuries. So when you in battle, when you in combat, whatever, your platoon gets blown up, you don't automatically jump up, but you start checking yourself and making sure you're good first. Am I telling the truth? Make sure you're good. Make sure everybody's good before you go try to retaliate. 
You take off running, one of your legs is missing. You should have eaten from your way <laughs> You should have looked down. Yeah, but when you take a powerful blow, you got to reevaluate yourself and make sure you're okay before you jump right back into the battle. This is where self-examination is of what? Utmost, utmost importance. You do not want to keep fighting if you have a wound that needs to be addressed. Uh-huh. You will bleed out and die. Yeah, that was the message last week. When the devil hurts you, don't blame God. Some folks jump up ready to fight, but they were hurt so bad that they have art against the person they're fighting. So now it's not even spiritual, it's personal. Because you didn't assess yourself. Then you start having problems with everybody. And it's no longer a spiritual battle. It's you and your attitude. Yeah, because you did not examine yourself and realize that you had been wounded. I know I'm preaching. At times, one must stop engaging to deal with issues that could cause fatality. Yeah, that's why you sometimes you just got to go on a period of fasting and praying. You know, and I ain't going to talk to nobody right now because, you know, my world been turned upside down. So I need to take some time and devote myself to fasting and praying so I can get built back up before I get back on this horse. Amen. Oh, folks looking at me crazy. They don't understand that. Self-maintenance is important, but you can't do self-maintenance if you don't first do self-examination. Amen. Some folks got the examining spirit, and they examine everybody but themselves. Oh, they can find all your wounds and scars and sores. They know everything that's wrong with you in your house. They know everything wrong with your kids and can't see their kids are crazy. That's because you're not doing self eat you got to do self-examination. Make sure I'm good. And make sure you're good before you talk about folks. I'm just trying to help you. But at times you got to stop engaging and deal with those issues that could cause fatality. That issue is about to destroy you. And you're ignoring it. You're ignoring that gaping wound in your side. Getting blood everywhere. On everybody. The devil may have caused something that needs what? Immediate attention. Amen. And we're in a fight with the devil. We know that. We've learned that over these weeks, right? You're in a fight with the devil and the devil knows how to fight. We ain't talking about no punk punk. He a punk for being the devil. He ain't no punk punk. He can fight. Remember, he's a worthy opponent. You know why? Because he got your number. He's got all of our numbers. He's been watching. When you've been around as long as him, you learn things. But we ain't giving him credit because we know we have the victory. So we ain't making him like he's unbeatable. He's already beat. He's already been defeated. And somebody send me that. Uh, brother, you're just giving the devil too much credit. The only way the devil can fight us is if God let him. But does he fight us? Well, I mean, but it's only because God left him, so God get the credit. What did you just say? He fights us, right? That's all I'm saying. He fights us. Well, yeah, but only because God, shut up! <laughs> Folk just want to have stuff to say. It's like, oh, there's a blank space here. I need to fit a comment in here. Let me think. <laughs> but the devil may have caused something that needs immediate attention, and you don't want to walk around with that wound because that wound will cause you to make very bad decisions. You know what a wound does when you have it? It makes you favor that area. You begin to favor that area. You know what that is spiritually? You begin to favor yourself. 
So now something is wrong with other people because you got a wound you won't tend to, so you're favoring yourself. Sir, right? I ain't looking for amens. I know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, you become your, you start judging yourself on a curve and giving yourself props. And you need to get somewhere and sit down and deal with what's wrong with you. Amen. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. Look at somebody and say, examine yourself. Examine yourself. We are soldiers, but some of us carry issues that hinder our defenses. It's hard to defend yourself from blows that you can't see. The devil will cause you to fight things. We can't change and ignore the things we should change. Yeah, that's the devil. Man, you, you stand up in church. Oh, I'm a soldier in the army. Of, I'm a soldier. And the, and the devil here. <laughs> Don't you start. You ought to like that, boy. It was start patting the second time I said it. Oh, wait, what? What's going to happen? Wait, what are we doing? What? <laughs> <laughs> but you singing a song, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier, you singing all of that? Man, you better be ready to fight. But the devil, he'll come and say, oh, you a soldier? Okay, I'm going to let you fight, but I'm going to cause you to fight things you can't change. So you'll ignore the things that you're supposed to change. You can be a soldier, but if you're fighting the wrong thing, you ain't productive. Hey, Amen, I don't want you in my, in my platoon. If you shooting the trees, man, I got all the trees. I knocked them all down. Well, thank you. Now they can see us very well. You jive turkey. Give me that gun. <laughs> Stupid. Why are you here? <laughs> man, I'm the best tree shooter in the whole galaxy. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Yeah, that's what the devil have you doing, just shooting stuff, dumb stuff. The enemy will have us distracted on the battlefield by making us focus on things that only God can change. Now the devil got you doing stuff that you, you can't change that, you can't fix that. But you focused on fixing it. And your focus on the things that you're supposed to be focused on is now broken. You're distracted. This is why we must examine ourselves and make sure that we are responding correctly to the attacks of the enemy. Amen. Amen. Psalm 71 and 7. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to what? Man, you got to pray against confusion. Oh, yes. Especially when you got bad voices in your ears. Your friends are trash. The people you listening to and hanging around, trash. And you're just constantly hearing that, man, you're going to be confused. Then you're not going to recognize what's true. Confusion will turn you against truth. Yeah. God is not the author of confusion. Amen. All right. Look at somebody say three things. Self-examination starts with us knowing these three things. And these things are important. I'm going to read these things and then I'm going to read a prayer right after each one so you can have what you need to pray against the three things. Amen? Amen? Or to pray against all four of the three things. All right? Y'all still with me? It's not going to take me long. It might, though. The first thing you got to pray is to not be focused on things you cannot change. Self-examination. 
things you cannot change. Why are you examining yourself and only looking at the stuff you can't change? That's not an exam. You're constantly in the past. The enemy attacks our past and causes our minds to focus and exhaust energy trying to remap the map. Now, how you got here is how you got here. Why are you trying to remap the map? You can't change how you got here. Why, you, why do you spend hours laying in the bed thinking about how you got here, what you went through, and trying to change the map? It happened. You can't change it. Look at somebody say, it already happened. And you can't change it. But the enemy will have you so focused on your own past, you'll start thinking, trying to, you start in your mind trying to change it. Me and my wife were talking about it not too long ago, the episode, you know, certain things you watch on TV, you be trying to change the outcome. And you already seen it before. Man, especially when we watch what's happening. Y'all remember what's happening? And rerun with that tape recorder. I be wanting to jump in the TV and tell them, say, sit down, rerun! <laughs> Young folk don't know what I'm talking about. They have no idea. Sit down, man! Tape recorder gonna fall out. <laughs> and you just cringe. Oh, there he go. Oh, he getting up. Now you can't change that. That's already been recorded. Well, that's your past too. Why are you focused on your past and you can't change it at all? Why are you occupying your nights? You're sitting up thinking about what happened and trying to change what you would have done, what you could have done, what you wish you had done. The devil knows. He put that in your mind. He fed you that thought because he knows if you're constantly thinking about that, you sure not thinking about where you're going. You can't be thinking about good things if you focused on the bad things of your past. Can I keep preaching it here? We cannot change what has happened. Look at somebody and say, you can't change what has happened. Man, I don't care how many times you watch the Infinity Stones. You ain't Thanos. You can't rewind time back. Oh, Lord, if I could just get that stone, God. Oreo show toto. No, you can't go back. You just have to be prudent from now on. Amen. Let's make some better choices from now on. That way, when I look back over my life, I won't see what I saw before. Now I see a pattern of good decisions, good behaviors, good works. This is the greatest attack of the enemy. To cause us to replay the past over, and not just over, but over and over again. You're wasting your time, and you're hurting yourself. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are what? They're what? Passed away. That's the power of God. Old things are passed away. Behold all things what? They come new. So don't let the devil keep you looking back over and over again. This not only keeps us immobilized in battle, you had a standstill in battle, but it creates a diversion so the enemy can attack our future unopposed. So while he's got you spinning in circles, dealing with your past in your mind, he's attacking your future. And you're letting them. Look at somebody and say, get over it. Get over it. If he can keep us caught up in our past era and mistakes, he can discourage us from moving forward. Amen? This is the prayer. Father God, deliver me from my past. Some of y'all need to pray that right now. Deliver me from my past. Do not allow the enemy... To use my past against me 
and cause me to focus on what cannot be undone. If my past has power over my future, then Jesus died for nothing. But if I believe that in Christ, I am a new creation daily. Daily. Declare to the devil, daily I'm a new creation. The mercies are renewed daily and I die daily. I am in the right place at the right time and I did not miss out on anything you have for me. Today is the day of salvation and tomorrow will trump today. Let that be your prayer. Proverbs 12 and 25. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word does what? Maketh it glad. You need to wake up in the morning and speak a good word. Amen. Think about the past. Ain't no good word going to come. But oh, the future hasn't happened yet. So I can speak something good in my own future. Second thing. You got to focus on the things we must change. Self-examination. You got to examine yourself and say, these are the things that must change. It is impossible to fight the devil if you stay close to him. Some things have to change. You can't go fight the devil if he's your friend. Some things have to just, just have to change. Amen. If you are in his face, he will bite you. If you are in his friend circle, they will attack you. If you are enjoying his vices, he will destroy you. You can't be in Christ and go after false gods in any way. Any idol that is raised up in your life nullifies your ability to fight. Every time you try to fight the devil, he holds your idol up. What you gonna do now? You got to come to me to get this. Can I preach in here? You are weakened by the devil's stuff. Just as Israel lost battles because of idolatry, we lose battles as well. Sure, you may be born again, but are you truly born of God's spirit or a false God spirit? See, that's the problem. And God is beginning to show me that. We're expecting some people to behave like they're saved and they haven't had a born again experience. We're expecting them to do good. We're expecting them to just make the right choice. But if they haven't had a true born again, man, you need to go home and ask your kid, man, are you saved? Oh, right, right. uh, yeah, yeah. No, not, not saved because I'm saved. Have you had a born again experience? Do you know Jesus for yourself? Do you talk to him? Have you read his word? Do you know what his intentions are for you? You just beating your kid and oh he's so bad, he's crazy. He might not be saved. Have you asked him? He come in church, he's just unresponsive. He just sit down. Maybe he's not saved. Yeah, anybody that's saved is going to praise the Lord. That's the first. <laughs> yeah, just because they live under your roof and eat your food don't mean they say. So you need to check. Hey, bro, is there a born again experience here? Well, I take them to Jay Bryan's class. That's <laughs> Jay Bryan ain't responsible for your kid being saved. Amen. The ones he's responsible for is on this road with him. Amen. Now he can present the gospel to them, but they have to choose that. And you need to know what they have chosen. Can I preach in here? But Israel lost battles because of idolatry. We lose battles as well, the same way. Sure, you may be born again, but are you truly born of God's spirit or a false God spirit? You will know by your allegiance and investment in whichever God you truly serve. That's how you know if somebody's saved. What God they invest in. 
If you are not on board with the true and living God's plan for you, then you have ventured to the other side and will continue to be hurt by the enemy of your soul. Why do you want to be with the enemy of your soul? He ain't brought you nothing but pain all your life. Can I keep preaching? Here's the prayer against this. Prayer for things we must change. Father God, I denounce every idol, every false god, every sin that has habit habitually come between us. I break every curse by the power of God. I uncover every hidden spirit that is in my life to confuse, defeat, and destroy my progress in you. Lord, I denounce all deceptions, deceit, and wickedness in my heart. I will walk in love, honesty, and uprightness in Jesus' name. I will remove the wicked friendships that are idols. You know, friendships can be idols. Yeah, then don't pray it if you ain't going to do it. You're going to keep the wicked friendships, then go on with your idols. But this prayer, I remove the wicked friendships that are idols. I will separate myself from those that do wickedness and are against you. In my solitude, and this is the real test. Anybody can behave in front of some folks. But what do you do when you by yourself? That's the real test. When you by yourself and got a little money in your pocket, where you going? In my solitude. I will honor you with my behavior. I will live righteously before you, Lord, because it is right to do. Amen. Don't be, I owe you that, Lord. I got, no, it's right to do because he is righteous. Amen. Psalms 143 and 11. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness sake, bring my soul, what? Lord, get me out of trouble. Amen. 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 The third thing, self-examination. Things only God can change. Now, please pay attention to this because we waste a lot of time trying to do stuff that only God can do. Yeah. Especially after you've messed it up so bad, you got to just sit back and let God fix it. Yeah. yeah. You don't know what you're doing most of the time. So some things you got to sit back and allow God to handle for you. Amen? We become efficient in battle once we learn that certain things can only be changed by God and his power. The devil will, all, will have us adopted new age philosophies, y'all. This is popular. That basically take God out of the picture and place our faith in our own hands. That's all new age philosophy is. You're doing it. You're manifesting it. Yeah. yeah. But we need the spirit of God to do things for us that are impossible for us to do. Many times we need him to do exceeding abundantly above what we can even ask for. Yeah. We war with certain things that are beyond our understanding. And we need to rely on the power of God to decode it and defeat it. Amen. Man, I'm telling you, when this COVID thing, when the whole thing first jumped off, boy, I was before the Lord weeping and wailing and gnashing teeth because I did not know what to do. I said, Lord, I don't know what this is. I don't know what to do. It caught me off guard. God, help me. And the Lord told me, stay right there. You know, I try to jump and let me, let me try to research and find God said, no, 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 don't look up nothing. Stay right there. God says, I need you impaired right here because I'm going to show you what this is over time. If you trust me. Yeah. And some of y'all remember when we first met about going outside, I sat there and told all y'all. I was like, man, I don't know what this is. I didn't. But now I do. But it took time for God to reveal it to me. I couldn't watch a YouTube video and then just start preaching about it. Like everybody else is doing. That's not research. 
Hey man, TikTok ain't no research. <laughs> Doc, I got about a thousand TikTok videos on that subject. Doc, you need to come on over here so we can do this research together. Bruh. <laughs> but many times we need him to do something exceeding abundantly above what we can even ask for. We just don't know. So we war with certain things that are beyond our understanding. And we need to rely on the power of God to decode it and defeat it. The internet causes us to know too much. It's okay. Yeah. When you bored, you just... Mm -hmm. We believe we need to know and want answers for everything. People frown on me sometimes. Brother, I, 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 what the... Can you answer this question? I don't know the answer. <gasps> and you call yourself a pastor. I don't know. I don't know everything. Get, some, get stuff wrong sometimes. Man, I'm just as human as anybody in here. But I do believe God has called me. And I do believe if I stay before him, the answer will come. And you don't have to clap at that. But the internet causes us to know too much. We believe we know and want answers to everything. This is a trick of the enemy. The devil knew in the garden that if man knew more, he would try to be more than he was created to be. <laughs> Come say that again. The devil knew in the garden that if man knew more, he would try to be more than he was created to be. So he coerced man to eat so that he would always seek more and bring more cares upon himself than he was created to handle. God, no, oh, I'm preaching. Oh, the hand claps. That's, that has nothing to do, nothing to do with what I'm doing in here. People today watch information all day, every day, without balance or healthy lifestyle practices. You watch more videos than you sleep. They get bogged down with cares, concerns, fears, and anxiety. Yeah, anxiety, just heart. Why my heart racing? Pastor, I need help because my heart is palpitating and it's beating. You watch videos all day? Well, just the end of the world videos. <laughs> You ain't slept in how long? Drinking coffee. You up drinking coffee watching me. You ain't trying to sleep. End of the world videos. And folk really believe they know when the end of the world is coming. And Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour. He said, I don't even know. So don't ask me. He said, I can tell you the season. We know we're in the season of his return. Right? We know that much. We don't know the day or the hour. So we're trying to add stuff up. See, my baby's birthday was, 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 was 7, 7, 42. And then he married somebody. And you add those two together. And you got, Stop it! But it's bringing cares, concerns, fears, and anxieties. Messing your heart up. You're messing your heart. The Bible says men's hearts will fail them because of fear of the things that are coming. Messing your heart up because you're afraid of what's coming. Can I keep preaching in here? Then when the devil comes and whispers their own problems to them, they cannot bear anymore and fall into depression and suicidal thoughts. So you worried about the world and all that's going to happen and your job and the vax and all of that. And then your own personal problem, the devil whispered those, that's it, it's a wrap. I can't take no more. I might as well end it all. I've been having pastor after pastor and, and not just pastors, but people that lead group camps and lead uh, team uh, 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 crusades and, and um what do you call them when they go overseas and stuff? Missions, thank you. Teen missions and stuff saying, hey man, why are our kids killing themselves? 
suicide after suicide. Young kids. Things that we, when we were growing up, could go through, they can't go through. Why? Because TikTok, all that they're watching, constantly seeing, their heart can't handle it. When we was growing up, we go through something bad, we going outside. We going, mamas, go outside. I guarantee you, you run this street a couple of times, when you get back in, you'll be fine. Yeah, when we were young. But now these kids, man, they go through something suicidal thought. It's death because of all the witchcraft they're watching constantly. So the devil comes and whispers your own problems and you can't bear anymore and fall into depression and suicidal thought. Y'all know there's no drug for depression. I hope y'all know that. You got to deal with the problem. You got to deal with what's wrong. There is no drug for depression. The drug for depression gives suicidal thoughts. So to me, that's not an antidote. I'd rather have depression. I'll stick with what was wrong at first. And I don't need nothing to numb me. I need to deal with what's wrong. Because when that pill wear off, guess what? Something is still wrong. All because they increase their knowledge without understanding. When you increase knowledge without understanding, you get sick. When it comes to the things that only God can do, we must get out of his way and allow him to do it. Amen. Don't be praying for the answer, for God to bring you an answer and then start Googling. God ain't working through our technology like that. I'll tell somebody the other day, boy, I asked the Lord. I just asked him. I was like, God, like, you coming back on a horse and carriage and Elijah went up in a horse and all his horse and stuff, but why are you not using the spaceships and all the cool stuff? The latest technologies and stuff. I asked God this. We had this conversation, Amy, for real. I said, Lord, like, why your stuff just, just old? <laughs> like, they didn't have bombs. Y'all didn't, I mean, nothing of that. God just, I mean, you, you, really, you coming back on a horse? The apocalypse horses, they on horses. Like, what is that? You know, the Lord spoke to me. He told me the stuff I created is good for my creation. He said, everything you mentioning destroys my creation. A spaceship propelled by fuel, that's destroying the atmosphere. But my horse can ride up there. <laughs> it ain't going to mess nothing up. Because that horse is mine. I made that horse. I don't need no Tesla. <laughs> but God is so cool. Yeah, that EMF coming out of it. That blew my mind. I was like, Lord, I'm going to leave you alone. Because you be knowing stuff. He spoke that to my heart because I was really wondering, like, man. Yeah, they're giving us this appetite for all this stuff in these movies, all this cool technology, but all of it is damaging to our health. Yeah. It's damaging to God's creation. Yeah. God told me something else cool. I gotta tell you. So remember in Era Man 4 when I did all the superheroes? Y'all remember the superheroes? Yeah. He showed me one the other day, and I'm mad that I didn't have it in there. But it was Thor and Hammer. Thor, you have to be what, worthy to get the, make the hammer come to you? But the Bible said Elisha dropped. The guy was using the hammer, and the, the axe, it was the axe, and the head flew off and went in the water. And the Bible said he threw the stick, and it just floated up. Bing! 
Oh, stop. Daddy. My goodness. He said, hey, man, I borrowed that axe. It fell in the water. He said, don't worry about it. Boop. Yeah. That's in the Bible. Arrow Man 5? Okay, okay. I'll try to come up with some more of them. Hey. <laughs> that was so awesome, man. Oh, my goodness. Where was I? When it comes to things that only God can do, we must get out of his way and allow him to do it. That's, that's the best example of the axe head I was just talking about. They got out of his way and said, God, you have to do this. There's no way we're going to find that in this water. And that's what we have to do with our lives. We can't find answers online every time. And we cannot sort through video after video calling it research. Amen. Amen. Some things only God knows. And our faith in him causes us to wait on him. Look at somebody and say, sometimes you just have to wait. Amen. Yeah. Oh, but Lord, I need to know because if I post it first, I get the most views. Sometimes you got to wait. But if our faith is in our ability or methods, then we have lost. God wanted to give Adam knowledge as he needed it and could handle it, not because of his desire for it. He couldn't handle the knowledge he got when he ate off the tree. He noticed he was naked. He's somewhere hiding from the source of life. Couldn't handle that. We need God to give us what we need when we can handle it. Amen? Amen. Amen. I got a remedy for you. Don't come telling me, oh, I can't sleep. And oh, my heart. And this. Oh, take a break from watching stuff before you come tell me about it. Take a break. And pray this prayer. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this. What is meant for this day? Give us this day our what? Da not weekly, monthly bread. Not in times bread. Give us this day our what? What I can handle today, Lord. What my body can handle. What my mind, what my health, what my heart can handle. Give me that today. And only that. Please forgive us for running ahead of you. Forgive us for using the internet as a replacement for you speaking through your word to us in due season. Lord, temper us so that we are not hungry for unvetted knowledge from random sources. But we are disciplined to hear from you and wait when we hear nothing. Wait when we hear nothing. God, we denounce the spirit of this world, the spirit of the cosmic crater, the spirit of hidden knowledge and concepts, the spirit of false information and elitist programming, the spirit of antichrist policies, Freemason policies, policies, and all secret evil policies that come to disassemble your plan for me. We come against all social media mediums, sorceries, mystic powers, and deviant platforms. Every word curse spoken, every hindering spirit unleashed, and every token of darkness received, digitally or physically, we cast away in Jesus' name. We will allow you to change what we cannot and do what you desire in our lives. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. It's okay. But in all thy getting of wisdom. Mm, mm, mm. Get and understand. Summary. 
Let's we'll close this one out with a bang. And I mean it. This has been a powerful series, boy. Powerful, powerful. Oh, the devil hates it too. And that's great. We will all suffer persecution and afflictions in this Christian journey. We will get hit and suffer pain. Anybody ever been hit? That hurt, don't it? Does it hurt when you get hit? But we will get hit and suffer pain. No one is impervious to the enemy. He fights and he fights dirty. He will find a way to get through our defenses every now and then. It's not because God is not protecting us, but many times it's because we have moved away from our protection. Amen. Sure, some things come just because it's life, but we must also stay on guard so that we do not allow the enemy room to come in and hurt us. Amen. When the devil hurts you, examine yourself. See if there is a kink in your armor or if there is an opening in your defenses for him to strike through. Every soldier must examine his own self and assess what he needs to repair, renew, and resume. Understanding the things we cannot change, the things we must change, and the things that only God can change will help us fight the most productive battle and win in the end. Amen? Psalms 18 and 32 It is God that girdeth me with strength And maketh my way perfect Man you can't fight without God You can't fight for God without God Amen You can't fight against darkness without light And it has to be the light of Christ I was looking at this one dude. Somebody was sending me stuff saying, man, he preaching just all the stuff you used to preach. He preaching, preaching. And I turned and watched him eat cussing and everything. I said, you listening to this? I mean, it's truth, though. It's Brother, he ain't leading nobody to Christ. It's clickbait. He using images and stuff to draw you in so he can get likes, so he can get paid. But he ain't leading you to Christ. That's not a vetted source. Amen. God don't have to use no cussing weed smoker to preach. God has men that he's called to do it. Amen. How are you going to fight that darkness? Boy, I turn the hourglass over on folks like that, man. You messing with darkness for likes and views? We'll see how this plays out. But it is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. You know, hinds feet, those big old feet. You can't be moved when you got hinds feet. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand holding me up and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them and they were not able to rise. They are all fallen under my feet for thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me we will not win this battle if we're not girded with the strength of the Lord so we got to examine ourselves and make sure that we are not fighting against things we can't change Amen. And we're changing the things we supposed to change. And we know, hallelujah, that God, the things that God can do for us, we have to depend on him for those things. Amen. We have to. We have to. Only what God can change. Those things that only he can change. Everyone stand to your feet. Three important ways to examine yourself. Don't waste time on your past. It's gone. Don't waste time on your past. 
it's gone. Don't waste time on things you can't change. Only God can change it. Amen? But the things you can change, change. Amen? Amen? If you've received this word with an open heart, and hey, you, you one of the ones that I'm talking about tonight, or today, this morning, tonight. Boy, that's a preacher thing, ain't it? And on tonight, oh, we need to have a night service just so I can say that. <laughs> but if you need the power of God to fight in these areas and you need help examining yourself, please come up here. Please come up here. Just, I need help with myself. Easy for me to see what's going on with other people, but I need help with myself. If you don't like the way you look to yourself, come up here. God wants to change what you see when you examine yourself. Hallelujah. 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 Just come up. You know, when God showed me these three things, because I just asked him, I said, Lord, how, teach me how to examine myself. I feel like I pretty much know myself. I know when I'm jive. I know when I'm doing well. I know when I, you know, need to study more, need to fix something. I ch try to listen. I try to watch my own family's response to me. I just, all these things I try to assess or whatever. But man, when God showed me these three things, I really saw, man, I do a lot of fighting of past stuff. And that's a waste of time. And then I do a lot of pondering on things I can't change. Yeah. And then sometimes I stick my hand in there when only God's hand will work. And I saw myself. I said, Lord, I, man. So I know there's people in here. Same thing. But that's what, that's what the word comes to do. Comes to rest our heart and fix that. Amen. So we can do a better job of assessing ourselves and understanding ourselves and examining ourselves. The Bible says if you examine yourself, nobody would have to examine you. If you judge yourself, you won't have to be judged. So everyone bow your heads. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for a message like this in a time like this. Father God, we thank you, Lord. For giving us what we need. Our daily bread. Father God, a word today that can change the way we even see ourselves. We pray right now, Father God, for those three things. Father, we pray right now. And even though we may have read the prayers, Father God, we pray them again and again. Over and over. Father God, help us. Help us, Father God. Help us, Lord. Not to focus on the things that we cannot change and help us God to change the things that need changing give us courage and strength Father God to just change it Father God give us the power of the Holy Ghost to stand up to it whatever it is and change it say no more no more of this help us to change it Father God and the things we cannot change Lord that only you can change we give you free reign to do right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, only you can do it. Father God, ain't no need of us worrying about it. No need of us worrying about it. No need of, need of us worrying about the, finding a wife or a husband finding us. God, only you can do that. So we give you that. No need of us worrying about certain things, Father God. Our future, our money, our finances, those things. God, we give it to you and we trust you. Worrying about mandatory vaccinations, whatever it is. No need of us worrying about it. We give that to you, God. You've sustained us this far. And you're going to continue to sustain us. So help us to not worry about the future. Help us to not worry about finances. Help us to not worry about illnesses and sicknesses and all of these things that you control, God. Help us. We'll do our part, but we give it to you, Lord. 
we give it to you and take the pressure off of us. And God, help us when it's time to pull back from the internet and pull back from communications and pull back from music and movies and help us, God, when it's time to just find that place with you, to be with you, to hear from you. And we will, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Show us ourselves, God. Show us the good, the bad, the ugly. Speak it to us, Lord, what needs to be changed. Speak it to us, Lord, what we need to alter. Speak it to us, Lord, and we'll receive it from you. In the name that is above, absolutely every other name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, hug somebody and say, I'm going to examine myself and make sure I'm good. And you examine yourself so that you will be good. And we'll all be good in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Don't be worried about the stuff you can't change. Just worry about what you need to change. And let God handle the things that only he can handle. In the name of Jesus. Man, this message blessed me today. Hallelujah. When the devil hurts you, examine yourself.